It's the final patch Tuesday of 2025. Not that huge, still a lot to talk about. Let's get into it with the patch report. Hello everyone, I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Zero Day Initiative and our Chief Patch Wrangler. I want to wish everyone a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Hansa, Kwanzaa, whatever it is. And if you don't celebrate anything, just have a happy day. We've got a lot to talk about and two very small releases, but let's get straight to it with Adobe. So we have five bulletins addressing 139 unique CVEs in Reader, Cold Fusion, Experience Manager, and a couple others. Don't panic at that huge number of CVEs. Most of those, 118, are cross-site scripting bugs in Experience Manager. Now, there are a couple critical ones, so yes, pay attention and uh, definitely look into it um, and take care of that, but just patch, don't panic. It's just a bunch of cross-site scripting bugs. Like I said, a couple critical, but nothing's too serious, nothing is in the wild, nothing is publicly known. The other one I probably should call out is Cold Fusion. It is listed as a priority one in the deployment priority. Again, not publicly known, not currently under active exploit, but a priority one from Adobe, so you should take care of that. Uh, the other update uh, is just in Reader, and then uh, DNG Software Development Kit, the SDK, and Creative Cloud Desktop. Nothing too shocking there. Again, don't panic. It's a lot of CVEs for December, but it's nothing to really stress about. And if you're using Cold Fusion, maybe think about uh, having a migration plan into something a little bit more modern. Okay, just just think about it. I, I'm not saying it's bad to be on Cold Fusion. Just just think about it. So Microsoft, 56 new CVEs covering Windows, Office, Edge, Exchange Server. Sorry about that, Exchange admins. Yes, the the elves up in Microsoft have, have left some coal in your stocking. Uh, Copilot, PowerShell, and Windows Defender. Um, so there's a whole lot of bugs throughout the year of 2025, but not as many as in 2020. We'll see if Microsoft eclipses that in 2026. Actually, I think they will, thanks to Copilot and other AI things. But uh, let's uh, take a look at what's actually being exploited now. We have one bug that's under active attack. This is in the Cloud's mini filter driver. Um, this bug has been, well, this component has had several patches over the year, uh, including back in October. This one is under active attack though. It's an elevation of privilege that leads to system level exploits. Uh, again, can usually combined with a code execution bug for ransomware and malware. We don't know how widely it is under active attack, but if Microsoft is the only one seeing it, it's probably very limited. Oh, Office, oh, Office. Another month, in fact, 11 months in a row now with an Office bug that where the preview pane is in play and an attack vector. So I don't know what to say about the preview pane at this point. Uh, I've disabled it on my system mainly because I have a Mac, and if you are looking for Mac updates for these, they're not available yet. So, good luck. Uh, yeah, I just watch out for the Microsoft updates when they do come out, because, yeah, Mac users, well, you know, you get, you get what you get, you don't throw a fit about that. Moving on to Outlook now. Initially, I thought this was another pre preview pane, but it's not. In fact, it's only critical on SharePoint Enterprise Server 2016. It's listed as important for every other thing that, that it does. However, the CVSS for this is the same as it is for all the other ones. So I don't know why it's critical on this one component, but important on everything else. If you're using Enterprise Server SharePoint 2016, that is, uh, make sure that you do patch this quickly. Uh, if not, consider it just an important level event. And then finally, we have GitHub Copilot for JetBrains. I can't believe we have something called JetBrains. I think that's what I called my little sister when she was seven. But anyway, it is a command injection bug, and uh, really it's a local bug, but a remote user could socially engineer something to have a user run on their system, and then they would get uh, automatic uh, command prompt injection as though it were safe, so because uh, of the auto approve settings. Again, this is the sort of thing I expect to see more of in 2026 as we move into this realm of AI and go through everything else. Uh, this is one of the ones that, that's publicly known as well. So yeah, it uh, looks like it's gonna be an interesting year for AI and AI components. Here we have our uh, table. You'll see that the PowerShell is also 
uh, publicly known. I'll get to that in just a second. Only three criticals this month. Everything else is listed as important. Uh, I do want to point out the exchange server bugs too. They require some extra handling, of course. And then uh, we had quite a few uh, Chrome bugs this month. They're down here. Uh, just listing those for you know administrative purposes. No need to action on those. So we've already covered all of the uh, critical CVEs at this point. So let's talk about the other code execution bugs. Mostly it's Office Open and Own. There are quite a few open, Office Open and Own, the majority of them. Uh, but in that case, in this case, there's you know no preview pane attack vector. So patch those at your normal cadence. The Windows Resilient File System uh, has a heap overflow, but that uh, uh, requires authentication. Uh, same thing with Azure Monitor. It requires uh, an attacker with local network access to the Azure Linux virtual machine running Azure Monitor could exploit a heap overflow, escalate privileges to the syslog user. So syslog is higher than your normal user, but it's not system. Now PowerShell. The PowerShell bug is interesting because you have to do more than just patch. You apply the patch, but uh, and it's just a simple command injection. But after you apply the patch, if you run a certain command, you'll receive a security warning message. You'll probably also need to reboot, even though this is just a PowerShell bug, to fully address the vulnerability. So when you're patching PowerShell, just go ahead and throw in that reboot to make sure everything's good and clean and everything's taken care of. So again, a little extra steps. Uh, moving on to the privilege escalation bugs. Most of these are just gonna lead to system level code execution. Now that makes them uninteresting to talk about, but for attackers, it makes them very interesting. Uh, like I said, the one bug under active exploit this month is actually just a bug that's like this. So it's just system uh, leading to system level execution. Uh, we also have a couple bugs that can uh, lead to different levels of integrity. We have one that's going from low to medium. Then we have one that's going from medium to system. I don't know why they call that out because it's just getting system. Um, there's also a kind of an odd bug in the brokering file system. It's listed as elevation of privilege, but uh, it leads to a denial of service. It says a local user could elevate privileges and calls it DOS. To me, that sounds like a DOS bug and not an EOP, but I don't know. Um, and finally, let's get to exchange. So there is an exchange elevation of privilege bug that was reported by the National Security Agency. That's right, NSA. Now, reading through this, it sounds like a very complicated uh, setup that you would need to actually get this to exploit. However, NSA. Um, also, the updates. So, <laughs> again, it's like, wow, when the NSA reports a bug, I kind of pay attention to it. It's not listed as under active attack. It's not listed as publicly known. But I do pay attention to those bugs from no such agency. Um, and also, after you apply this, um, you'll note that Exchange Server 2016 and 2019 do not have updates because they are out of support, technically. You need to get on the extended support update program, the ESU, to get those. And if you are still running Exchange 2016 or 2019, just because there's not a patch doesn't mean you're not vulnerable. It just means you're not patched. So make sure you pay attention to that. Um, speaking of Exchange, move on to the spoofing bugs. There's an interesting bug in Exchange, not from the NSA, uh, where you can change the from email address that's displayed to the user. So this is different than the old attack where you would log on to a server and say from, you know, bill at whitehouse.gov or whatever, uh, which was fun to do. Um, but it shows a different username to the user that was the from email address. Uh, again, no updates for Exchange 2016 or 2019. You have to do the ESU. Uh, the other spoofing bug is for SharePoint and it's really a cross-site scripting bug. They just call them spoofing bugs in SharePoint because that's how they do. Um, four information disclosure bugs this month, and all of them lead to just memory leaks of random memory. So that's good. Uh, three DOS bugs this month, and all have a Hyper-V component. One is in Hyper-V specifically, but the other two say that they can be used by a low privilege client to do a denial of service on the Hyper-V um, through DirectX graphics kernel. Uh, I don't exactly know how that would work, but it says you can crash Hyper-V. So if you're running Hyper-V, definitely pay attention to these DOS bugs. I would still like more information from Microsoft. That's what I really want for Christmas, is more details from Microsoft about some of these DOS bugs, so I better know how to deal with them. And folks, that is it. That is my Christmas gift to you, a short and quick uh, update. And hopefully everything goes smoothly. There's no bugs. And we all have that nice, relaxing holiday with our friends and family. If not, enjoy the overtime.
I will see you next year, uh, January. I will be here. And actually, I will be in Tokyo getting ready for Pwn to Own Automotive. Our uh, next Patch Tuesday, I think, is January 13th. And I will see you at that time. So until then, may all your reboots be smooth and clean. <laughs>